Noth Clipper High friends, Darth Momo here with Double O Studio, and we're back. Um, we hope we didn't scare you off the last time because last time we talked about eight videos across 2014 and 2015. This time we're going to talk about 2016, which encompasses 43 videos. <laughs> All right. But we're going to try to tone it down. Obviously, we don't need to do a five-minute intro like last time. And I think we kind of both mutually agree that on some of these, we're just kind of kind of go, yeah, not much to say. Um, I say this. Yeah, I say that. Okay, so we'll put that in this tier. Yeah, I agree. And then move on. <laughs> yeah. So um, yeah. 2016. So I plugged all these in Movie Maker just to get an estimate, and it came out to about three hours and 40 minutes of runtime, which I spread over three days. You did that all in one go. How was that? <sighs> yeah, I had the day off, and I'm like, you know what? Uh, the next coming days, I had an anniversary, so the next coming days, I'm like, I'm not going to be watching this on my anniversary with my girlfriend, so I'm literally just going to bust it all out in one day, and yeah, that was that was awful. And now that I think about it, too, because it doesn't work on your Xbox, so you had to watch them all on your PlayStation in your little bed, huh? You couldn't at least, like, be out in the main room, on the couch. No, yeah. Oh, that was even worse. I, I did mine on the couch, so I was at least able to walk around. No, I, I, w I had to, like, sit on the bed with no, like, nothing to lean on. Yeah, it was pretty bad. <laughs> <laughs> so we won't, uh, just for um, crunch time, too, we'll, we'll get right into it. We'll, uh, we'll start with the very first 2016 video, which is Galaxy War 3, um, a series which was unfortunately cut short. There's, of course, narrated scripts that were done later on, but this is the last finished Galaxy War. So, um, Cole, what did, you, uh, what did you think of this one? As my uh, Galaxy War um, new audience member... Uh, well, first off, I, I didn't even... Oh, wait, sorry, that... sorry, sorry. Before you begin... Um, this is currently available on Draw Movies. If you're going to put it on the screen anyway, why do you have to say that? <laughs> why not? <laughs> all right, all right. So um, so first of all, I didn't even know that you didn't finish these. That's that's interesting. I, I forgot that. Um, but anyway, Galaxy War 3. So you're probably going to be disappointed with this review. Probably not. But, but honestly, this was my least favorite one. Oh, okay. Maybe I am a little disappointed. <laughs> Yeah, it was my least favorite one because um, I was expecting something really interesting with the villain, and it just. Can I spoil things on here? Can is that? Yeah, fine? if they haven't seen it, that's their problem. <laughs> okay. Um. Yeah, I was really mad that the the main villain was just the dude's brother. I was like, "Are you kidding me? Like, what is this? Despicable Me three? Like." <laughs> That trope has been used over and over again. Oh, he has a long lost brother that no one knew about. Like, oh, I, I was like, I actually gave you some props because, you know, these films are like obviously bad, right? Like you made them, you made them 10 years ago. So I give you some props in the story at least. So I was excited when, with that cliffhanger, but no, just to find out it was just some random brother. I was a little disappointed with that. I thought you were going to do something really crazy. Like what if, what if it was uh, Master Momo? That's his name, right? Master Palmer. Palmer. <laughs> what What if it was Master Palmer, but he was playing both sides? Like, that would be really interesting. And, like, he didn't die. Like, I, I thought it was going to be that. I was like, oh, that would have been really unique, really cool. But to find out it was just a brother, I was a little disappointed. Um, and also, like, just the whole thing was just so bad. <laughs> like, the scene where they're just in the 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 little rocks just talking back and forth. It was just so... Yeah. It was cringy, and then the the ending scene where they're like all fighting, yeah, that was that was bad. I, I gave it a, a two out of ten. Unfortunately, I I enjoyed the second one a lot more, and uh, I, personally, I think the second one is the best. But um, yeah, I gave it a two out of ten. I, I was not excited to share that with you because I figured you'd probably like three the most. So I actually gave this one a three point five, and I do want to say I think this came out before Despicable Me three. Um, so I'm going to I'm going to wear that one on my shoulder. Um overall, I thought it was like I thought it had the weaker crawl of the 3. Um I like the idea in the like 
kind of like the first half of the video more than the second half. So like, I like the idea of like the blood of the blood streak bounty hunter, how we're still carrying that thread on. But I also like too that like Kyle like doesn't want to kill him, and then he does. But then because like he gives him a chance to leave, right? And the guy's like, uh, okay, yeah, nope. And he tries to kill him. So Kyle, of course, lops his head off, and then he's like, dang, I feel bad. You know, he said he had a family, and he buries him. Like I like that. Yeah. And I also like that Kyle's like kind of like done with the story, and then Master Palmer's Force Ghost is like, no, 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 get back in there. <laughs> And I, I like Palmer's, or, like, Lord Palmer. I like his introduction. And I like that, like, at least the story treats him as a different type of villain. Like, he's not just, like, oh, I'm the evil empress. Like, he's he's got a little bit more nuance to it. So, like, I like that aspect. But then once we get to, like, Trinipla, yeah, it just feels like a new hope pretty much shoved in, like, ten minutes. And that word, well, to me, it falls it, down a little bit. And also, clearly, you had some inspiration from a certain sequel film because because uh it was really cringy you're, it, clearly i could tell that you just watched seven and you were like oh we gotta have this random girl that has no parents well and... yes and no um so yes force awakens it just came out but galaxy war four um or galaxy war one was at the end of 2014 and we talk about at the very end we talk about trinipla and then we allude to her in the third one or in the second one, which was in 2015 in, like, October. So that was set up, but that was more so taking the inspiration of, like, A New Hope. And then, obviously, we had the plot twist of, like, that was the villain, so that's why her parents were dead, or it was because that's her father. So, if anything, I see what you're saying, but that was more so taking from the originals as opposed to Force Awakens. Well, I also just... But we did the... use sequel music, so I'll, I'll yeah, bring you I, that. Yeah. I also just didn't, like, this random girl wasn't set up in the other two, at least. Maybe I, like, missed it, but, like, she just popped into this one. I'm like, who is this chick? You know? So, yeah. I don't know. And that, yeah, it was very much, like, very vaguely alluded to. So, at the first one, the focus was Palmer and Kyle. So, she was mentioned at the very end. But we didn't know what we were doing with the story. We didn't even know we were going to make another one. So, um, that's why she just, like, kind of pops in at the end. And then in the second one, we didn't know who a Trinipla was. We didn't have another female, so we took the story in, th in the second one the way we did. And then in the third one, it was like, all right, now we need to, like, stop, like, just talking about her. We need to bring her in. Um, the other thing, too, is, yeah, the, the fight scenes were kind of weak. I didn't like the original trilogy parallels. I, I would have liked if I had danced around it a little bit more than I did. Um, yeah. I do like how the Force Ghost came out. For what we had, I did like how that Force Ghost came out. Yeah, the only thing about that Force Ghost scene is that there's some random dude in the background just like... Yeah, even Emily, she was like, she was watching it as I was watching it. She's like, who's that guy back there? I'm like, yeah. <laughs> so overall, um, I mean, I give you yeah. credit for I, the... I, this is one of those that, like, I wish we had the resources and we could <sighs> take that story, polish it, and remake it. Not, yeah, not I... now, maybe, but like a couple years back. That would have been cool to do. I agree with you on the whole Kyle... In the hunter thing, but thing is, yeah, um, I, I would say F tier. <laughs> yeah, F tier. Um, All right. But yeah, <laughs> um, the next one we're gonna talk about, short and sweet, Breakfast Brawl, dreaming on nuclear <laughs> films and jaw movies. <laughs> um, do you want me to go first again? Since go it's ahead. Your... Okay. So if it's like one I did, I'll let you go first, and then if it was one you did, I'll I'll take the lead on it. Okay. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah, uh, I give this one a whopping 1 out of 10. Yeah, this okay. was bad. No, I'm sorry. I, I Again, I hate, you know, ranking these so low, but to me, like, I, I just, I have to be honest. Um, the only thing I gave props for was the story. Um, but everything else was just so cringy. Like, it, it was just so hard to watch. It was, the production was not very good. It was like a galaxy war, but very extremely cringe. Like, you know what I mean? Like, at least with galaxy war, you watch, and you're like, okay, I mean, these are just a bunch of kids. Breakfast ball was just like hard to watch. Like the only thing was the story for me. I don't know why I gave it a one. I think I just really didn't like it because uh, I, you know, I watched these a few days ago, so I'm right. Trying to and you watched them all back to back, which I'm sure probably played a little bit of part in it too. Yeah, but um, 
Yeah, I just really did not like that one. And it was like really short too. I don't know. I maybe one is a little too harsh, but I just remember thinking that okay, that was really bad. So I gave it a four out of ten. And this was actually one of the first videos that Yak and Robin and I put together. This actually we came up with initially on the day we shot the first Momo. And we did this first, but you know, as we talked about in the last video, it took a while to come out. We reshot it a couple times. Gave it a four out of ten. I agree with you. I like the concept, um, the as a basic like sketch, but the Nerf guns just kill it. They do. They really do. If we yeah. had like pistols, I would have liked it a lot more. But yeah, the Nerf guns just kill it for me. Now I think I remember now. Yeah, like you just like cut, and they're just like there, like. Which, that, that was, was supposed to be part of the comedy of it. At least that's what we were going for. Oh, yeah. Yeah, see, like, it didn't come across... To me, it came across serious, so it was just cringe. I'm like, yeah. what are you guys doing? Like, you know what I mean? Like, I don't know. Um, but maybe that yeah. was why we rolled with the Nerf guns, but I don't know. I think, in hindsight, the Nerf guns just kill it for me, especially in light of every other video we've used where the Nerf guns go away, except for Momo videos, so, yeah. Yeah. Um, F-tier? <laughs> Yeah, F tier, but because you're both, we're both, you're low and I'm low, so F tier. <laughs> um, the next one is the Adventures of Darth Momo number three, available on Jaw Movies and Darth Momo. Take it away. Okay. Um, again, uh, very low. Uh, I, again, I, I feel so bad, but uh, yeah. Um, to me, I watched it and I'm like, okay, that was literally just. Darth Momo 2, but worse. Like, I gave it a 1. Did I give it a 1? Yeah, I gave it a 1, unfortunately. Because, um, like, look, I would give it higher, but you it's literally just Darth Momo 2. Like, you guys just fight real quick, and then the same thing happens. Like, it was just like, what's the point? Like, at least make it different. And with 2, it's like, at least with 2, like, you're somewhere different, and it's a little bit, it's like paced better, and it's just like, the shots are better, but this one was just literally one stagnant shot in the front of your house, the same concept as, as number two, and the same thing happens. I'm like, what? Yeah. So, I, I didn't like that one at all. Um, so, yeah. <laughs> I gave it a I gave it a, I gave it a four out of ten. I thought the fight looked okay. Um, and I thought a couple of the dialogue lines were kind of cool. Um but, yeah, overall, I agree. It's it's nothing special. I'm trying to look at my notes here. Yeah, I literally put, I like some of the dialogue, but nothing special about it. It's just it's just kind of there. And like you said, nothing stands out. It's literally, and that's what I kind of started to realize about these Momos, too, is a lot of them kind of are very similar, uh, which, yeah. I mean, I think that was the point of the show. But, obviously, for some people, that's not going to work. And rewatching them all back to back, I could see how that can get very tiresome very quickly. Whereas making yeah. one every, like, four months over the course of a couple of years, it wasn't something that necessarily dawned on us. Yeah. So, um, I gave it a four out of ten, but, yeah, obviously, F tier. <laughs> there you go. Um, The next one is another Ja Movies hit, available <laughs> on Ja Movies, called La Yuvia. <laughs> um, oh, shoot, where is that? Uh, that was the, the Spanish one, with uh, me as, like, the weather reporter. Okay, so um, unfortunately, um, I didn't know. So you just told me before we started shooting this, I didn't know that there was an English version. So, yeah, I should, probably should have told you about that. And honestly, I didn't ask because I just figured like this is the film. Like I just figured you didn't have an English version. So I I gave it like a um, I gave it a three <laughs> because because I had no idea what they were saying. Like I just I didn't know what was going on at all. But it seems like you guys put some effort into it. I like that you uh, put the shower over it, um, like the hose. I mean, uh, oh, that actually looked really well upon just like rewatching it. That hose. Yeah, I uh, all I said was I don't speak Spanish, <laughs> so. But you know, obviously, I I think you guys put in some work. I like that Kyle also learned some Spanish, and I like that you learned some Spanish. I wish I knew what you guys said, but unfortunately, yeah, that's. That's so there's one that. more in 2017, a Spanish short, and they both have subtitles. So you'll have to watch the English subtitle one for this one. And we'll we'll briefly revisit in the 2017, just out of curiosity. Okay. But okay. I actually gave this a two out of ten. Um, put super basic. I like how the rain came out. That's pretty much. It was very basic story of just 
I'm a weather reporter. It was a video for class. A weather reporter. I interview a kid. You know, the, the rain destroyed his little picture. Uh, but you could tell, like, I'm giving him some of the lines in the middle of the video. Uh, you know, I use my lightsaber as, like, my microphone. So, yeah, I gave yeah. it a 2 out of 10. Yeah. Nothing, nothing special about it. F tier once again. <laughs> <laughs> our, uh, our next video we're going to talk about is The Adventures of Darth Momo number 4. This was the one with Nick Robin. And this is actually the last one that Nuclear Films really had their hand in story-wise. Um, the next one is really where I start to take control of the series. Okay. Um, you want me to go first? Yeah, go for it. This is available um, on Darth Momo and Jaw Movies. So, um, I feel really bad about th saying this, but this was my least favorite one. <laughs> um, it... That was just that, yeah. That was like really cringy. Like when you, it, it, you just like change character too. Like you start like breaking the fourth wall, like throwing jokes out there, and and it it was just so bad. I I I don't know. I just cringed so hard watching it. Um, what did I put? Um, so remember I, I told you that like Nick and I kind of were often at odds about the direction of the series and what the series was trying to be. I was more yeah. like it's a consistent story. Nick was like they're one off random little videos. Yeah. So we leaned into that one hard on this one, and we took a more comedic approach, which I actually thought made it more rewatchable. But I understand, like, in hindsight, yeah, not as rewatchable. I still, like, got a kick out of it, but anyway, sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt you. No, no, you're good. I also said that, like, I, I was, it was kind of confusing. Like, you know, you die, but then you come back to life. Like, like you do it once, it's like, okay, but then you do it again, and it's just like, what? Like, I, I, I didn't like the story choice either. Uh, yeah, this one's also a 1 out of 10 for me, uh, unfortunately. But, um, yeah, there, there's better Darth Mobiles out there. I, I, I'm not, like, I'm not trying to hate on Darth Mobiles, but I, I'm not trying to hate on it. I just genuinely did not like it. That's fair. Um, I uh, I gave it a 5 out of 10 just because I, I like wow. the comedic approach. I thought it made it more rewatchable as opposed to just, like, Oh, yep, there's a Momo's apprentice. Yep, he comes in. They fight. Okay, he, he's dead. That's it. Um, and actually, like, the it's funny, the whole death scene thing, that actually comes into play in the next one because, like, I died, and then, like, I was going to edit it, and I'm like, oh, wait, like, I'm supposed to, like, be laying dead in the next one. I'm like, crap. Um, I'll just reverse that footage real quick. <laughs> so... And but then like it also causes problems too because like you said breaking the fourth wall I'm like let's do a fight like a prequel which I'm like okay that's kind of funny but then like okay well this is supposed to be in the same universe as the prequel so like how's that work? Yeah, and I I don't know to me it wasn't funny it was just like extremely cringy like oh let's do a fight like the prequels like no no stop <laughs> but obviously yeah F tier. <laughs> Yeah. Um, the next one is The Adventures of Darth Momo number five, currently available on um, Darth Momo and Ja Movies. Take it away. Uh, this one I gave a little bit higher. Um, I did 2.5 out of 10. I know that's not a lot, but I mean, after everything we've I've reviewed, this one's pretty high. Um, I give this one, where, what is it, number five we're talking about? Yeah. Um, I like that there's like a goal now. Like at least like at least with this one he has like something he has to go do. But the other ones it was just like, oh, fights, fights, fights. And yeah. then now in this one it's like, oh, he has a motive now. Like, okay, I'm excited to see where he goes with this. Um and I also put like it was a little bit more easier to watch. Um but obviously it was it was still really low because you know they're they're really they're just not done well, unfortunately. They're just they're just so hard to watch. But this one, I did give a little bit more props to. I, I, I think you did. I think you're improving. Well, I'm interested to see where you think of the rest of the Momos as we keep talking, because this is where they start to become more story-driven and more linear and coherent. And so I'm interested to see, because as someone who, like, I don't know, to me, a lot of them seem kind of boring, but I'm interested to see what you think of some of the future ones now that, yeah, you're right, some of those classic story elements start to come into play here. I gave it a, a 5 out of 10, actually, on the same level as number 4. I thought it was a lot more rewatchable than I originally thought. Um, 
And there was a couple dumb things, but I thought some of the performances actually were decent in here. I thought I actually did a decent performance as Momo, as opposed to the others that just show up and say a line and then fight. I actually thought I had a, a decent performance, and I thought Yak did okay as Master Yaki. <laughs> Um, a couple dumb things. I thought the fight more or less came out okay, except for all the jump cuts, but I gave it a 5 out of 10. All right. Um, <laughs> is, that would still be up here, though. Right? Yeah, that's still up <laughs> yeah. So, next one. I know we said we're trying to speed this along, but we got to take a moment to to talk a little bit because the next one is where we all came together. Literally everyone. I'm in it. Chris is in it. Hunter's in it. You're in it. Vi uh, Nick Johnson's in it. Like this was your video that you took on and put together, but you pull all our pieces. Nick edited. Nick had locations. Uh, Chris and I were in it as actors, and then obviously I, I did a little tinkering with a special edition later on. Um, but this was this was the original. This was where it really started. The this was where it started for you. This is where it started to take off for Yak and I. Um, this one is available on actually a lot of channels. This one's still available on Darth Momo. It's available on Jaw Movies, and it's available on Nuclear Films. Um, I think it's on the Web Shark, and it's on Digital Reality. Um, oh, it is. I didn't know that. Yeah, this one oh. is just this one. Um, this one I gave it a I think a seven out of ten. Oh um, wow! Probably just for nostalgia. But I actually think, so I think there's, you know, a lot of more nitpickier things, It's but not really any major problem. Um, you can clearly tell we're starting to get into our element here. Like, I think the music was too loud and the camera work was a little shoddy. Um, the random swap from the neighborhood to the church at the end fight was a little, like, brat. Um, <laughs> but I thought the fights got, still kind of hold up. Um, I thought the story's fine, and I can't pull nostalgia out of this one. Most of them I do, but I think this one's hard to pull nostalgia out of. Okay, that's crazy that you said that, because I have the exact same ranking. I also gave it a 7 out of 10, and I was so mad at myself. I'm like, this this is not a 7 out of 10, but it is a 7 out of 10. It has to be a 7 out yeah. of 10, because this is Batman 1. Like, this is... Everything started... Um, from this one, and it's like, I can't give it, I can't put it in D tier. I just feel bad for putting it in D tier. So, I agree with you. I think it's like, I, I, my notes are iconic, easy to watch, um, you, but bad production. So basically everything you said, like, you know, yeah, think, iconic. Like, talking about nostalgia, I think there's a level of credence there, because maybe as, like, a newcomer coming in, like, this might be a little, like, okay, that's not really that good of a video, but for someone who maybe like was watching our channels from the beginning or like watched our channels over the years, I think nostalgia is an important play in here. I mean, you could almost call it like, you know, to circle back, you could call it similar to the prequels, like someone who grew up with the prequels. Yeah. Nostalgia is absolutely in play there when they they're looking back at it. And I think that like even audience members who were with us back then and are still with us, nostalgia is probably a play at it. Yeah. And you know what's funny too is when I dropped my Shanty Bird trailer, I remember someone from high school messaged me and she was like, Oh my gosh, like I've watched you since your very first video and you've improved so much. And I'm like, Oh my gosh, like that's this is awesome. Crazy. Like, like I don't know. Batman One is just a special place in my heart. Um, obviously, it's got horrible like lighting, um, it's got bad, like you said, the ending where it just switches to the church. Like, it's just it's got a lot of issues. Like, but at the it, same time, you know, too, it's also very rewatchable, if that makes sense. Yeah, it does. That's what I put. I put rewatchable. So, um, our first yeah. one in C tier, then, huh? Yeah, C tier. I'm so <laughs> happy. I, I've been waiting to put something uh, above F and D. So, we yeah. finally got one in C tier. So, yeah, I mean, it's, I have a lot of love for it. Um, and that's like, if you look at like our Batmans and the special editions that I edited. Like, this one, the only thing I tried to really do was, besides uniformitize the credits, I tried to see if I could fix the coloring. I couldn't. Otherwise, yeah. like, I mean, granted, I didn't have the footage. Maybe I would have done a little bit more with it. But more or less, like, this wasn't one that really needed to be messed with as much as the others. Yeah, for sure. For sure. So, our next one we're going to talk about is Star Wars, A Fool's Gambit, 
A smuggler story. <laughs> this one, this one's got a lot of importance though, because like while we were working on Batman one with you, and this came out after Batman one, and this is available on um, Darth Momo, John movies and nuclear films. This one was like the first big like video Nick Yak and I were working on and we're working on it simultaneously. So this one, as much as it may not be that great, it's got a lot of importance in that regard, but Go ahead, take it away. Um, you're probably gonna be mad, but I give it like a four. Um, I just, I think, I think the second one is so much better, and I'm not saying because I'm in it. Like, I, no, I, I would agree this, with that. Like, uh, I just think the second one, or I mean, this one, um, has a lot of problems. You know what? I, I don't think that's fair. You guys did have CGI, and you guys. I'll give it a little bit higher. I'll, I'll 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 give it a five, but I don't know. I I can't do anything uh, more than that. Um, I I I think it's good for the time, but it's 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 really cringy and it has a lot of bad production. But yeah. I'll give it credit for where credits do. Um, yeah, that's that's my ranking. I really don't have much more to say about it. I think it's fine. I did, I don't think it's amazing. I just think it it's uh kind of cringy and for the time, like I'll give it props for. I actually gave it a six out of ten. So we'll have to talk about that oh. in a second. But okay. I gave it a 6 out of 10. Um, let's see, what are my notes on here? I thought the CGI was okay. It's not that great. But I guess that's yeah. the idea that we had it. And it's not that bad. It's not as bad as I remember yeah. it being. Um, Nick act, Nick's acting was bad. Um, Yax was okay. But like, I literally have a note on here. And I remember telling them this years ago. Like It felt like they were playing themselves. Um, yeah. I will well, say were, I actually had a – oh, go ahead. I was just going to say you're the best actor for sure. I was sure. just going like, to say I, I don't remember thinking that highly of my performance, but upon rewatch, yeah, it's it's fine. It's not that bad. Um, the crawl was awful, and the editing's yeah. kind of choppy. Um, yeah, the one thing I do love, though, is I love that I went – so I made a special edition, and I also <laughs> made a super special edition. And in the super special edition, I cropped it to theatrical aspect ratio. And oh, I nice. love that. And I don't know if okay, you noticed I, that on your DVD or not. No, I didn't notice that. But, um, I mean, that's that's a great detail. Um, so. And by the way, like, I, I'm fine with it being in D tier. Like, as soon as we started talking about it, I started to think about it a little bit more. And I, I kind of agree with you. I don't, I don't think it deserves a below a five. Um, with that being said, like, I don't mind if we can compromise and put it in D. Okay. Um, but, and yeah, that's I mean, more so along the lines of production as opposed to story or acting. I want to say, I think the story yeah, is pretty I, basic. I, acting isn't overall that great, but production, at least compared to a lot of the other high school videos too. That's why I kind of just changed my mind just now. I was like, you know what? Production wise, you got to give it some credit. You gotta, yeah, I agree with that. So our next one we're going to talk about is Hampers, currently available on nuclear films and digital reality. Um, I guess uh, since you were in this one, I'll, I'll take it yeah, first. Go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> um, I gave this one a 5 out of 10. Whoa, but really? I'm interested to see what you think, and I'm open to compromise. I think... Um, it kind of just exists. Um, the costumes are decent. Um, the editing's kind of meh, though. The premise doesn't really strike me as a l very interesting, and it kind of feels very amateurish. Whereas Batman One, like, was more so nostalgic. This just feels amateurish, if that makes sense. But go okay. ahead, take it away. I'd like to see what you think, and maybe, maybe I'm willing so, to change my perspective. Well, first of all, do you do you know why it's called Campers? Because Nick sits out there and kind of camps. I know originally you guys were wanting to make a Call of Duty film. Well, okay. So back in the day, I, I'm, I was kind of an idiot back then. I don't know why he was calling it campers. Because uh, I know, like, you know, that's what you do in Call of Duty. That you call someone a camper if they just sit there and shoot at you. Um, I just wanted to make it Call of Duty. But nowadays I realized, oh, that, that makes so much more sense calling it campers. Because that's like the joke. So I, I would agree. Those. I would agree. So first of all, I, I I mean, you don't play video games. So I'm just telling you this because you probably ranked it so low because you don't understand like kind of like what that represents. Mm -hmm. Basically, and I deal with this still in the newest Call of Duty, people camp all day long. Like 
you'll be playing in some match and there's a kid all the way down the map with a sniper camping and you can't do anything because he'll just shoot you and then it's like well how am i how am i going to get over to him because he's just going to get me like we we call those in the in the call of duty community uh, community campers so when i was re-watching it i'm like oh my god this is hilarious um and it actually is shot relatively well like it's it's pretty watchable um uh, it's pretty funny there's good editing um you're gonna be surprised i gave it a, a seven i gave it a seven because i thought for for what it's tr- going for it's really good in regards to like oh this is a play on camping in call of duty like i think that's really funny and then at the end when you got an, another camper and he shoots the other camper and then it just cuts to nick playing all the games like oh, god dang it like that that was really good story Right, that was really good writing right there, and I thought that was like really cool because the whole thing was in a video game. You're, um, me. you're you're making the pitch. Would you be okay compromising in D tier? Um, I mean, yeah, I guess we can. I I think it genuinely is one of those better films. Like, I would personally stick it on, like only in C tier. But if you want to compromise, we can. I I would go ahead and put it in D tier. It does not. I think for it. this one, just because I have a feeling we might have some more compromises down the road, I'll say you made a convincing argument. I'm willing to compromise and give you, um, give you C tier, but my personal, personally speaking, I wouldn't. I think I'll change to a six out of ten, but I wouldn't go higher than that. But I'm willing to compromise and put it in C tier. Okay, okay. I feel like we're gonna have a lot of compromises later down the list. Um, but yeah, I just, I genuinely give Nick a lot of props for this film. Um, yeah. So okay. I'm glad we compromised. <laughs> um. So, and, uh, and like I said, I mean, I made the case for you with Fool's Gambit, and I, I mean, I think the compromise is kind of fun on it, too. We don't necessarily have to yeah. change our personal opinions, but... Um, yeah. So, anyway, the next one we're going to talk about is... Oh, jeez. The Adventures of Darth Momo number six. Currently available <sighs> on Jaw Movies and Darth Momo. Take it away! Oh, boy. Um... This one was just wild. I I was just so confused and I I was cringed out. Like I'm like, what are you doing? Are you fighting like a what are you fighting? A vacuum. And, <laughs> and then you just put the camera in your face. You're just like, I'm like, what are you doing? Yeah. Um, yeah. This was not good. I I actually you're gonna laugh though. I actually gave it a two instead of a one. Because I genuinely think this one's more interesting than four. Because at least, at least with this one, like there's like some story going on, and with four, it was just so cringy and so fourth wall breaking and and just kind of bland. This one, at least, like you did something different, and I like some of the backstory. And honestly, it was kind of funny to watch you fight a vacuum cleaner. So I gave it a two. Um, but yeah. Actually gave it a two as well. Yeah, production wise, especially with camera, this was bad. But one thing that I just I find so interesting is because this is the one that sets up really the rest of the Momo series. Because I mean, as well, I, I feel like it's not really we could talk about it since we're gonna get to it later in the video. But like Dava Kum is like the overarching villain for the rest of the Momo videos, and he's introduced as a vacuum cleaner in this video. <laughs> and also the plot point of, like, me once being a Jedi, like, that's really, like, the first hint of, like, true story in these videos so far, production-wise, release order. And it's like, you just drop that in there, and, like, that is such a crucial point, too, to the rest of the videos. And they're just dropped in this, like, vision of me fighting a vacuum cleaner, and it's just, it's, it, I think wild is the best <laughs> word, like, in retrospect. Yeah, I was I was blown away. I totally forgot because I remember we watched all these on, the, on your roof that one day and I totally forgot about you fighting a vacuum cleaner. And I was like, no way. And this was really something I just I wanted to make a video for um, Star Wars Day. So I cobbled this together real quick. I hated it, too, because it was like we teased the bounty hunter at the end of the last one. And I'm like, well, I have to delay the bounty hunter. So I, I tease that again at the end. But. I'm like, well, this is, we'll take it this direction, but I'll just ask because Twilight of the Apprentice and Rebels, where Kanan gets blinded, that had just come out a little while ago. Can you tell that just came out? Yeah. <laughs> but obviously, yeah, F tier. 
Yeah. Um. Oh no. <laughs> Not this thing. <laughs> Let me swallow right. my water first. <laughs> Tales from the Machine of the Past, available on Jaw Movies. Literally, when I saw this was next on the list, I started going, no, 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 no! <laughs> I, I don't even remember if you finished this or not, but take it away. Um... Honestly, I'm not going to lie with you. I, I really enjoy the premise. I think the premise is really sick. Um, I didn't watch it entirely, uh, but if I was going to rank it, I'll give it... Um, I'll give it a two. I'll give it a two. Because I would give it higher if it was actually like not random toys. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I feel like this is one of those things where it's like you mastered the story, but... It's just a bunch of random toys, and and I can barely hear the dialogue. It, it, the production's really bad, so honestly, yeah, I'll give it a two for for being unique and interesting. But everything else, no. <laughs> so I would encourage you then, on that regard, to finish it whenever you have time. Because one thing I know we're gonna do is we're gonna rank the franchises at the end. So we'll revisit this, obviously, being part of Galaxy War. Um, which that gets clarified in the second half of the video. I gave it a two and a half out of 10. It was actually more rewatchable than I thought it was going to be. Um, I agree though. Audio is not that great. Um, but I really like the premise, the idea of just like campfire stories, essentially. Right. Like yeah. it's just these kids that find this old like robot and he's like, you know, chock full of history. And this, this right here is actually the Rudolph and quack pitch more or less the, the flashbacks. That's the Rudolph and quack pitch for you. So, um, yeah, that's, that's really it. Um, the other thing I like too, is I like the whole illusion trick at the beginning where I'm pulling the cord and it's trying to make like the robot moving. I actually kind of like that small little snippet too. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I could see what you're going for. It was really funny. Um, but yeah, I could see what you were going for with that shot. So I gave you props for that too. So two and a half out of 10. Um, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Our next video is oh god batman 2 attack of <laughs> hush the uh original version on nuclear films and the special edition is on jaw movies all right well you take it away so that's right i like i froze for a second i forgot i'm supposed to talk about this one I gave this a five out of ten what a five okay i gotta hear this like it was i ranked it too high or too low too high. Um. Wait well, one though I do have on here is thank God for the special edition. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, I thought the acting was actually okay. Um, the story's slow. I think Bruce knowing the Palmers kind of just feels like it pops out of nowhere. <laughs> That's kind of weird. Um, the hush fight is bad at the end, but this is actually more rewatchable than I thought it was going to be. I definitely don't think it goes above F, but. It wasn't as bad as I thought. And I do think that, like, the the special edition <laughs> edits helped elevate that a little higher than it probably originally deserved. Um, but, yeah, that's my argument for it. Um, so, I can see your points. Um, you kind of convinced me to put it a little higher. I originally gave it a two. Um, because this one is just my... Well, this one and three are my least favorite. Like... Yeah. Like, we'll talk about three, but this one is just, uh, like, yeah, like, him randomly knowing the Palmers, like, that was, that was just confusing. The fight scene, there's literally one fight scene, and it's, a, it's at the very end, and, it, and it's over in two seconds. Like, you're, you're watching Batman, and you only get one fight scene, and it's horrible. And it's like, you build up Hush, this entire film, only for him to be like, come and get me, and then he gets punched, and it's over. Yeah. It's like... What was that build-up for? I will and... say, though, in retrospect, like, surprisingly, the Yakerson actually did a decent job at playing Old Man Palmer. Yeah, he did. I, I will say, like, yeah, we, we did good acting. Um, it's just, it's cringy. You know yeah. what I mean? Like, when I'm like, here's the money for your dead father, and he's like, oh, my Samantha. And I'm just like, this is so cringy. Like, we this is Batman. Like, why are we watching this? This is supposed to be Batman. Like, there was none of that crap in the first one. In the first yeah. one, it was just like, let's get to business. Here's the Joker. Let's fight. 
Yeah. Like, and this one is just like so drawn out and just very cringy. Um, your special edition makes it so much better, but I'll I'll change it to a three. I okay. Mean, I agree. I agree with you on a lot of those points. Um, I just I can't give it anything else. Like, I just I don't like to. Um, the next one we're gonna talk about is Indiana Jones and the and what was it? I I just wrote Indy one the... on India, no, oh, and the Sacred Sun. Um, yeah, available the on nuclear films. Probably, yeah, yeah. it's probably available. Um, on I gave this a five out of ten. Wow, really? Yeah. Um, so I will say there's a lot of like little things that definitely, and it helped having recently rewatched all the Indiana Jones before Dial of Destiny came out. Um, there's a lot of little things in here that I thought you actually did like. For an amateur filmmaker, I thought you definitely did a decent job at capturing the essence of Indiana Jones. A lot of little small things. Um, the directing wasn't great, though, and a lot of sequences felt just, like, jumping and confusing. Like, I would almost say that, like, I think so far this is actually, like, the first one I would say that was a directorial fail on your behalf. Okay. Um, I did actually, like, the pacing wasn't that great, and the camera work was shoddy. Obviously, no effects. I really wish I'd kind of, like, pitched editing some special editions for you. Um, but I will say, actually, though, Nick and Yak actually felt a lot like Indiana Jones villains, though. I'll say that. Yeah. Like, not, like, main villains, but sidekick villains. If you want to do a special edition, you can. Like, Maybe. you can edit it if you, if you want to. Um, Maybe after actually... Fedora Man 2. Maybe eventually I'll, I'll pitch that project for you. Um... That's actually really surprising. I, that actually makes me feel kind of good because I gave it a three out of 10. <laughs> um, I said bad production, but watchable. Like I, I agree with you. I think there's a lot of really fun moments. Um, for example, what, m one of my favorite um, things out of all our videos is that sequence where I pull the sun off and it cuts to the villains and they're like, do you have any threes? And Lance is just there, and like Lance actually like acts pretty well. Like yeah, I, I move. I remember when I shot that scene. I'm like Lance, look at the ball, look at the ball, and I'm like, and he's like, and it, it just looks so good. And then when I, I did I did a good job at making a setup and a payoff. Like this is like a really good writing technique. At the beginning, I find like a random tennis ball, and for no reason, I just pick it up. Like it was just like a character thing to do. Like okay. Um, I just pick things up when I see them. Like I must think, you know, anything can be va uh, useful at one point and it comes in handy later. So mm -hmm. it was like a cause and effect kind of thing. Like it was, it was a setup and a payoff. I love that when Lance comes running around the corner, I throw the ball and I just use that as like a, as a way to get rid of him. And the villains are like, are you gotta be kidding me? And they come after me. This um, is one of those that I feel like if you made this about two years later, it would have been a lot better. And yeah. I would actually think that that would still be something worthy to be on your channel. <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I think this one is a lot of fun to watch. But yeah, the production just kills it. Like the scene where I, I, I whip the gun out of his hand and take it back and then shoot the other guy. I thought that was so good. And there were so many references, like how I get close to, this, to the screen, like you mm -hmm. were saying. Like that's, a, that's an Indiana Jones thing. Um, but besides all that, like you said, the production is just so bad, and I can't give it any higher. That's that's why I was so harsh on it because it's just like this F tier so then. Bad. Yeah, <laughs> F tier. Unfortunately, but yeah. Uh, unfortunately for Indie One. So our next one, um, actually, this is the first one that's not available anywhere. <laughs> um, this is behind the scenes. This is a video that. I mean, I, I would have been there, but I had to go on a family trip to North Dakota, so um, I guess I got a courtesy credit in it, but this is actually something that you and Yak kind of worked on with a bunch of people at a library film camp. Um, I gave it a 1 out of 10. Um, that's actually interesting you gave it a 1 out of 10. I, I actually gave it a 3 just because of like all the, the new production. Because you got to remember, at this time, we were so new. Like, yeah. the fact that we used green screens and we tried it and we had all these people involved and we... It, you can tell in one of the shots, like, that we actually focused in on one character and, and there was, like, depth of field. Like, you could actually see some blurriness behind that character. So I gave it, like, a three just for 
you know, actually being better than all of her other stuff at that time. But everything else is awful. Yeah, yeah. like the story is awful. The awful green screen where where they're oh, just like don't forget like the guy literally grabs the tree and does the sneaky sneak thing yeah, yeah. oh my god so but bad one thing i did put though is like the the concept is good but the execution is atrocious and like i know like we talked about a possible story treatment for making this a lot longer and a lot higher quality like a year or two ago and like it spawned in my opinion a really good story treatment with a lot of potential, but yeah, it's just awful execution. Yeah, yeah, uh, that was actually kind of hard to get through. So yeah, <laughs> yeah, that one's F tier for sure. Um, oh, it does let me expand the columns. Okay, awesome. All right, now we know. <laughs> I'm not even gonna show S tier for this video. <laughs> um, so our next one then we're going to talk about is um we're going to talk about the fall of momo temptation of the dark side oh this is the first place. one in the momo trilogy okay okay and the the prequel momo trilogy but go ahead take it away um you're probably going to be surprised by this i actually gave this a 4 out of 10 um that that I think that's the highest ranking Momo film I've ever done. Like, <laughs> um, I I said that it was an interesting story, new locations, a lot of people involved, um, but horrible production. So like, obviously, all these old videos are gonna have horrible production, but I really enjoyed like the fact that there was two like two people fighting, uh, or no four people fighting at the same time. Like, I thought that was really interesting. I love that you're in a new location. I love that you use, um, what are the, the quads? Yeah. Um, I like that it's like a prequel. So like Momo has, I mean, granted, if you've never seen the Momo series, then it literally wouldn't matter that much to me or to you. Um, so, but I guess because I watched the Momos, it was interesting to see him like as a Jedi um so yeah i gave it a four out of ten um yeah the production uh, like the other ones are just it's so bad but yeah, yeah. this one was worthy I, of four i gave it a three out of ten um i thought one of the strongest aspects of it though was the fight choreography you could tell like in release order watching these the fights are improving we choreographed that and i think compared to some of the earlier momos and the galaxy wars it looks so much better um the acting still isn't great. I mean, you're working with kids, so it is what it expects. Audio had some weak points. This, I thought the story was kind of okay. But I, I I think that's kind of interesting to hear from, like, an audience member, the aspect of, like, yeah, I've been watching these Momo videos, so it was kind of cool to go back and watch, you know, Momo as, like, a prequel, as a Jedi. We just learned in the last one he's a Jedi. Now we're going to see some of that and what led him to become Darth yeah. Momo. Um I, I will say one thing I like about this from a behind the scenes point is at this point, I still didn't really know what Jedi hunted was or what to do with it. And um, I kind of toyed with the idea of like our Momo videos or that, is that in the same like universe as the galaxy wars? And this kind of helped really <laughs> lock all that in place. I'm like, you know what? Let's make Grace's character, the same character as the Jedi hunted one. Um, that was her lead Jedi hunter. And now these are the other two that she has left now that the other one's dead. So wait, Jedi Hunted is in the Darth Momo universe? Yep. So Grace has the same character in Jedi Hunted as this one. But she it's not in the Galaxy War universe. No, it is. It's it's all together. It's all connected. Darth Momo is in the Galaxy War universe? Yep, so too? Darth Momo takes place before the Galaxy Wars. So <laughs> okay. this is a time when there's still a new Jedi Order, and then obviously Galaxy Wars is the Sith are back. Okay. <laughs> um yeah, I gave it a, a 3 out of 10, though, so I guess that one's going to go in F tier, isn't it? Yeah. Okay, so um, the next one we're going to talk about is The Fall of Momo 2, or I guess The Fall of Momo, The Fateful Encounter, currently available on Ja Movies. It's the second Momo prequel. Um, go ahead, take it away. Um, the Fall of Momo 2. Okay. Um, 
I gave this one a three out of ten. So just one less than the first one. Um, the the I really liked the chase scene, even though it was insanely shot poorly. Um, but I just like that you guys fought on some bikes. Like that was that was kind of cool. Like that's something that no one's done before. So especially with a production so low. Uh, well, actually, it's a free production. So, but um. <laughs> I gave it a three out of ten because um, I love that the rest of the story was bland. I, I put like basically it was just I I don't know there was really not much to it. There was just a, some fighting going on, and then all of a sudden she turns him like that, and it's just like okay, all right. I I, I don't know what to say with that. <laughs> so, yeah, that that's true. The one thing I do like about that whole story though is I do like the idea of. And I, I use this a couple other times throughout. I think I use it once in my Lego Rebel Life, but I like the idea of like villains like lying to their like who they're trying to deceive to like get them in. So like she pretty much like makes it seem like she her her Jedi hunter like did the wrong thing or like screwed up or something, and she's like, get out of here, run away. And she uses that to try to like lure him in since obviously he hates that guy. So I, I like that aspect of it, but it could have been executed a lot better. I do like the chase scene. I agree, not in the sense of like how it turned out, but we've never done something like bef that before. And I don't know if we've actually ever, maybe a couple times in like the Mission Impossibles, but I think beyond that, have we ever really done another chase scene? <laughs> I don't think, not like that. That was, that so, was pretty cool. I like the idea of it. Um, let's see, what else did I have on here? Um, yeah, I put overall, um, it's unengaged, but story execution is unengaging, chasing cool, um, fights I thought were worse than the first one. Yeah. Um, I think the only thing I like at the end was like when he's choking him and he like snaps his neck and you hear that visceral sound effect that I like. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. This was just kind of like a, eh, like, yeah. I, I feel like that belongs in eh, but what did you rank it? I gave it a three out of ten. I like oh. it, it was pretty much I liked a couple little things, but overall, yeah, I actually would probably say yeah, worse than the first. Maybe not so, just because it was shorter. I don't know. We had the exact same opinion. Yep. <laughs> okay. There you go. F tier it is then. <laughs> um the next one, we're gonna take a little break from Momo for a while. And because we were all like we were creating these at like simultaneously. So now we're going to dip back over to what was going on in Arizona. Um, we're going to talk about Batman three rise oh. of the cat woman. Um, <laughs> one thing I will say right off. Oh, this is, this is currently available on nuclear films. Um, one thing I will say about this is I, I, I right up front. I didn't hold the quality against it because I know that was just the result of like downloading a, a downloaded copy essentially. I downloaded a copy of a copy, so, um, but the audio mix was bad. Yeah. The audio mix was really bad. Um, it was hard to hear a lot of it, so it's hard to really say anything. Yeah. Um, it felt too quick. It ended kind of abruptly, and I don't know, I don't really, yeah, it just, it almost felt like it was just, like, nothing in a sense. Yeah, it was. It quick. was... Um, the fight with Catwoman was quick, and it just, like, it happens. Yeah. I gave it a three out of ten. Hey man, you're generous. You're, you're you are a generous ranker. That's what I'm noticing from you. I gave this one a wait. I gave this one a one. Like like that that was bad. That got that is the worst one by far. Um, as for like the actors, like they they all did good, but the production is just so bad. Um, the story. It's just, it's just got nothing to it. Like, I fight Catwoman at the very end, and it's the same problem with Hush. Like, you know, we build up this whole thing, and then we just have that little tiny fight at the end, and that's it. And it's just like, I don't know. I mean, that, that also happened in Batman 1, but at least in Batman 1, like, it had a build up, and then there was also another fight at the end. Um, I want to say, though, one thing I want to really give you props for, because this is something that should, could have so easily been overlooked, even by a professional, I think. Um, and you, you caught onto it is the radio. You, you focus on the radio, right. To announce the Catwoman thing, but you keep it going in the background as you and Hunter start talking, which audio mix wise, 
kind of sucked. But yeah. the continuity aspect of it, that was a really nice little detail that I really want to give you props for. Well, thank you. I remember um, <laughs> I, I actually got my dad to do that. I don't know if you knew that. Yeah. Yeah, my, my dad is in a video, which is funny. Um, but, um, yeah, I remember um, trying to do – I did the voice for the, the phone number, but it was just so bad. I just put it in there anyway. I don't know. <laughs> so, so, F tier then? F tier. Oh, this is also available on uh, the Web Shark too, I think. Great. Um, the next one is actually only available on the Web Shark. Captain Rotter, <laughs> Renewed Warrior, the original version. Can't call it 2016 because they both came out in 2016, but this is the original version. I guess I'll go first since I had nothing to do with this one. Um, okay. I gave it a 2 out of 10. Okay. Um, the story's okay. Um, but the acting overall is bad. The no special effects kills it. Like you have a grenade explode. You don't see it. You hear it. And then Yak just does this tumble in midair. And it's like, it just, it looks so awful because this is like the first time that like the special lack of special effects really kill it. Like yeah. the Batman's you can kind of overlook it, I guess. I don't know. But like this one, it just, it hurts it. Um, I want to say though, actually, yeah, production quality really low. The pacing is kind of bad, but one thing that I thought it actually did really good, and I might almost say it did better than the the remake, is I think the music was actually really on point here. Okay. Um, now, I I also had two out of ten, so we had the exact same ranking on that one. Um, I I I actually said the exact same thing. I said you know I I give it props for having an original story. Um. But literally the exact same thing as you said, just horrible production. Um, I actually think the nurse scene in this one is so much better than the new one. Um, because in the I'll new agree. one... I don't want to say a lot better, but I do think it's better. Yeah, I, I don't know why we decided to shoot in my room in the new one. It's just like, it's so distracting. You just see all this like crap everywhere. But in this one, it's just like, no, it's just like in this, like, it's in the guest room. There's still crap everywhere, but it's not as like crazy yeah, like it's a little bit more believable it's something that you can give a pass to yeah um and, but yeah I, I literally had the exact same opinion as you do i i think it's i think it's an f tier just yeah. because of how um early uh, in our filmmaking careers we were <laughs> <laughs> um our next one then we're going to talk about is batman 3.5 the comedy uh, Wait. Uh. <laughs> This, this one, so and, um, bad. it's not available anywhere, actually. It was available <laughs> on Nuclear Films for a while, but he took it down in 2020. So, yeah, Thank this God. one's not available anywhere. Um, gave it a 3 out of 10. You gave that a 3? Why? I think at this point I was just getting, like, numb, and they were all, like, blurring together. <laughs> I gave that a 1. I mean, it was something different, too, and I don't know why. Um, I guess the production was fine, actually. Um, it looked a lot better than Batman 3 did, I thought. Um, it kind of just exists. There's nothing special about it. But one thing I do really like, and I don't know why, but I really like the end when, like, you you walk in and your mom's like, were you throwing, or were you being up on the kids? And you're like, well, they were throwing oranges at me. I don't know why, but I really like that. I really like when I'm like, you can't even. I'm like, go to go be a Boy Scout or something, and then I walk in, and you. Just, I'm like, Mom, you're. I'm home, and then I walk in in the back room. You see Yagerson. <laughs> he like just. I don't know if he like shoots himself or what he does, but it was so funny. Um, it was. It did make me. I think the first time I visibly cringed though so far on this rewatch was when you're like, "This is a different kind of Batman. It's a comedy." Wink. Oh, yeah, that was so bad. Yeah, I'm cringing just thinking about it. This this was so bad. Oh, my God. Do you have anything else you want to say about it? or? No, F tier. F tier. Just throw it in there. Not worthy of anything. So, the next one, we're going to dip back into Momo. We're going to talk about Fall of Momo. Fall of a Jedi, the last in the Momo trilogy or prequel trilogy. Take okay. it away. Oh, this is available on Jaw Movies. Um, I gave it Momo. a two. I got. I gave it a two point five. 
Okay. Um, I think the only thing I really liked about it was the ending. Like, I think most of it is just, like, you fighting your apprentice, and, like, that's the whole movie. And then at the very end, it just, like, nicely ties into the first one. And I, I like that. I think that was, like, the only thing I genuinely liked. But everything else, man, was just so bad. Like, um, the same issues as always, like the production and everything. But um, I just, I had to give it a, a little bit more um, than just a two because um, I, I do like how you tied it into the Dark Momo. So I actually gave it a four out of ten. Oh, okay. And that's actually the main reason why is, see, this one I actually used to like, like rewatching. And then now that I've rewatched it, it's been a few years, but now that I've rewatched it again, it's like, mm, nah, it's still bad production. It's slow pacing. Um, I thought the acting was decent for Momo, though. But I just, I really, truly love, I probably love it more than I should, but I really love the nice little bow it puts on it and winds it back up to the first one. Like yeah. We got Yak in there, and then... And he, he told me, he, I didn't realize this at first, but he told me, he's like, yeah, I even made sure I wore the same thing when he came over to film that day. Um, I made sure to have, like, the jacket the same way. And I don't know, I just really love, like, and the music, I think, really works for it, too. I just love how it all builds into the first one again. Yeah, and, and honestly, like, you'll, you'll like this. So that was actually the last thing I watched all day. Like, that was the last thing I watched. So you can imagine how tired and dead I was. Yeah. But... I just loved that conclusion so much that I actually went ahead and like just continued it. I was, I wanted to see it transition into dark level one. And then I kind of just like watched them all again. So you'll, oh. you'll, you'll, you'll think that's funny. Yeah. Um, so uh, yeah, I, I'll, it's F tier obviously, but I'll, I'll give the conclusion. I do think overall, I, I want to ask you a question. Do you think that overall, like looking at it through the lens of like, these are Momo videos, would you say that the Momo trilogy did a, a good job at explaining Momo's fall to the dark side? Um, because you just like start killing people, right? In the third right. one, right? Uh, not really. I mean, I would say kind of because, like, if you're a Star Wars fan, you would understand, like, oh, once you start killing people, you're just kind of lost. But if you're not a Star Wars fan, it's just like, oh, it kind of comes out of nowhere. Um. I agree with yeah. that. I think, in theory, it could have worked, but I would agree, like, yeah. Oh, well, no. Yeah. Because, like, I don't know, you end, like, the first one, and he's, like, he's still, like, a Jedi, right? And then he's in one shot in the second one, and then in the third one, he's just, like, he's pissed, right? Yeah. And he's just, like, it kind of just, like, I don't know, like, you, you almost have to, like, read between the lines to make it work. Yeah. So, for sure. F-tier, then. <laughs> yeah. Our next one we're going to talk about is Batman 4, Return of the Riddler, a uh, theatrical version available on nuclear films, <laughs> and the special edition is on Jaw Movies. Um, I guess, I don't know, do I take this one? We're all yeah, you take one, it. But, well, actually, um, I guess we're both involved, huh? Uh, I'll take, take it, it since it was yours. Yeah. yeah. Um, I gave it a 4 out of 10. Okay. Um, I thought it was, oh wait, sorry. I was looking at my Momo ranking. I gave it a six and a half out of 10. A six and a half? Dude. Okay. This is why you like the sequel trilogy. You just, you like bad things. For the a record, Force Awakens is very meh. And the Rise of Skywalker is awful, but I, I don't love the I don't They're Jedi. not even canon. They're not even canon. I don't they are canon. canon. Just like um, Batman 4. No, 6.5 is way too high. I'll let you talk, but go ahead. That's, that's crazy. I thought, okay, maybe we'll agree on this. Yakerson actually did a really good job at playing the Riddler. No, that's true. That is true. Um, I thought the fights were still meh, but I thought production was a lot better than the last couple ones. Um, the audio is not amazing, but and Riddler escaping the garage, the way that like turned out was awful. But... I think it's actually paced decently. I think the story's fine. It's a lot better than the first two, I would say, because there's actually, like, an end fight, and it's got, like, some sort of story going on at play. Um, and I, I just thought it was a lot more rewatchable than I thought it was going to be. <laughs> wow. 
Um, and I, I think I, we all do pretty good performances, and I think that helps elevate it too. I gave it a, a three out of ten. Um, I, I agree. Like, there's a lot of effort put in, but production was still really bad. Um, what I was going to say about the Batmans is it feels like I know you don't watch horror movies, but anyone that's watched a lot of the slasher movies like Halloween, um, Scream. They all have like the same thing where like the first one comes out, it's a, it's iconic, it's classic. And then all those directors are like, okay, yeah, we're done with this. It was a one hit, you know, it was a great thing. We don't want to make more, but the studio is like, no, we got to keep pumping this out. So this first one, Batman one came out iconic. And then me and Yakuza were like, no, we got to keep making this. And Nick's like, nah. So we just make these shitty ones and it just keeps coming out like two, three, four, five. It's just like, that's what the series feels like. And, I mean, Yakerson did a really good job at, as the Riddler. I will say there were some fun fight scenes, but it was just so cringy. And I, I don't know. I, maybe a four. Um, I don't. I It's definitely not C tier. I mean, I'll compromise with you and put it in D. I just, I don't I think agree. It's, it's not C tier at all. Um, you can put it in D if you want. I think Yakerson deserves, like, the credit um, for the Riddler thing, but I don't know. I just, I don't think any of the Batmans are, are like Batman one. I haven't watched six yet, but Batman one like genuinely deserves to be. Yeah. <laughs> I would you say almost though, have it as high as Batman one. I really like your slasher <laughs> parallel or analogy, but I, d I do think that out of, except for, you know, removing one from the equation, I think so far four is the close, come the closest to it. Okay. That's fair. That's fair. Are you going to put it in F? Oh, shoot. I thought I put it in D. <laughs> None of these were supposed to be in D, were they? No, those are all okay. <laughs> Um. Oh, this one. Okay. Um. What is this? This was... I, I want to I talk about this one. The oh, Power God. of Lord Palmer, a Galaxy War story available on Jaw Movies. Oh, God. We get away. 1.5. Um, that one was awful. It, I, like, okay, you're probably gonna hate me. No, but, no. Um, I, I actually had to speed up a little bit. Like, it, it was so long. It was literally just fighting, 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 fighting. And I'm like, what is this? Is this just fighting? So I sped it up for like a few seconds, and I'm like, oh my god, this literally is just fighting. So I kept speeding it up, and it just didn't stop. Even on like double speed, it didn't stop. And I watched the whole thing in like super fast, you know, speed, and it still wouldn't stop. And then I would, you know, press play and let it resume. Same thing. It's like I never, I didn't even skip anything. It was just like, oh my god, this is so bad. And like, I get what the characters were trying to do, like, um, but like, I could get that just by from the speeding up. So like that, that was just bad. I'm sorry. Like I, I it was a hard, hard watch. So initially, I wrote a 1 out of 10, and then I crossed it out and put a 0. 0.5. <clears throat> this, I'm, like, I'm not a man who likes to use the word hate, but if I was, I would hate this. So, like, this was literally, we just, we were playing out in the backyard with our lightsabers, and we kind of created our own little story. We're like, that's cool. We should film that. And we did it again, and we filmed it. But, oh my goodness. First off, I do want to say, I think the crawl in this one came out better than the Jedi Hunted crawl. Yeah. At least the audio matched the the narration or the the words. Um but the music is so tonally off. Like there's some points where you have like across the stars playing and it's like what? Um yeah. the fights were awful. And this like this is what I would call straight up character assassination because like I retroactively made this um Lord Palmer, right? And like the Lord Palmer you get in Galaxy War 3 is much more nuanced. He's very, like, more quiet and reserved. Um, swift, powerful strokes. And then in this one, like, I'm walking around growling and screaming. There's yeah. no subtlety to it. No nuance. Like, if I could go back and delete one video, it would be this one. I Like, this felt like I took Darth Momo. Like, that character felt more like Darth Momo than it did Lord Palmer. Yeah. Um... 
the the reason why I gave it a one point five is because I I really liked that the bad guy wins. I thought that was kind of interesting, but that that was it. That, yeah, I yeah. like the very basic premise that these Jedi are just you know it's a time of peace, right? They're just they're out on a training mission, and then this like shadowy dark side character basically comes out from the shadows, kills him, and disappears. Like I like that aspect of it, but it's like like I'm holding him against the wall, and it's like. The Lord Palmer we saw in Galaxy War 3 would have wiped the floor with these guys. Like, you see Kyle Kemlin, like, this Jedi prodigy, right, fighting Lord Palmer. And Lord Palmer wipes the floor with him. And then, like, here I'm like, ah, ah, ah. Like, I actually, this is the first one that I've legitimately hated. Put it in F tier. Put it in F tier. Yeah. We're going to put it in the bottom F tier. There you go. <laughs> Like, I, I would actually, like, if there was a column below F, I would put that one in there. I actually, like, like I, I have my problems with Galaxy War 1, but that is bad. Yeah, that <laughs> one's so bad. I agree with you. The next one we're going to talk about is, speaking of bad, Deathstroke, Legend <laughs> of the Assassin. The, uh, this is actually only available in one place, the special edition on Jaw Movies. <laughs> All right, go ahead. Um, I gave it a, uh, what I, a 2.5 out of 10. Oh, okay. Um, I thought there was some decent aspects, like the character of Snapshot. I know that was very much just like an on the fly thing I created on set. And I think it actually like, it's kind of fun to like rewatch the 10 seconds. Yeah. Um, and I thought Yak did pretty cool as Black Mask. Okay. Um, but the fights are bad. The audio is bad. Production is bad. Tanasi sucks. He's dead stroke and he's in flip flops. Like he yeah, walks in was... and he goes, They call me the Terminator. <laughs> <laughs> you wrote the script. Wait, who wrote the script? Tanasi. <laughs> he wanted to make a dead stroke video because he said he had a really cool costume. He pops in with a cool mask and sweats. And then it's like, he's holding this, like, I mean, I know we put, like, I added flashes on it in the special edition, but, like, he pops in with this green, like, gun, toy gun, and it's like, he calls himself the Terminator, but he wanted to make a Deathstroke video. <laughs> yeah, I'll, I'll give him, like, the, the effort and the dedication for it, but, yeah, that the costume design was not good. Um, I gave it a, I gave it a, wait, what would I give it? I gave it a three. Um, I just, I really like me as Nightwing. Um, oh, really? Because I, like I, I actually didn't. Oh, really? Yeah. I, I just like when I flip the thing. Well, I guess I'm just biased because I love Nightwing. Like, that's like one of my favorite characters. Remember that one year dressed up as Robin? Like, yeah. I, I, I love uh, Robin and Nightwing. So I, I really like that because like, it's like the only time that Nightwing has ever sh shown up in our films. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much it. I think... I will I say your a... costume was decent, though. I like that. I just didn't like your portrayal, but I like the co or the costume. Yeah, I think everything else was decent, um, but like the story was fine. But yeah, it was pretty bad at the same time. Like I, I think three is perfect. Two and three is fine. F tier. Yep. Uh. Um, our next video we're gonna talk about is why clone trooper executed order 66 oh, available God. on job movies oh where the, the heck is that i have so many on here i have to like find it real quick oh okay i found it um okay yeah this was awful <laughs> um did you ever watch hello greedos videos on the star wars changes yeah. That, I don't know if you caught the, but we pretty much just copied his whole intro for one of them. No, I know. You also, like, mentioned Hello Greedo in the titles. Oh, yeah, um, the subcredits, yeah. Yeah. Um, the only thing I really liked was the flip-off scene. I thought that was really funny. Um, but, yeah, that, was, was, that like, was awful. I was, like, 10, too, when we did that. <laughs> yeah, that was really like... funny. Um, Story-wise, like, I get it, but it's just kind of bad. Um, everything else is really bad. It's just horrible production. You and Yak at the beginning, so bad. Like, just cringy. Like, yeah, no, two out of ten for me. I didn't really like much anything about this one, except for the flip-off scene. I was dying when I saw that. 
Yeah, I, I agree. I gave it two out of ten too. The audio was kind of bad. I think overall it's a little just unclear what even the story is or what's going on. And it's like if you yeah. haven't seen the Hello Greedo video, you wouldn't know. Um, exactly. I, I did put on here funny when Kyle flips off the camera. The other thing too is I just hate that like it's basically channeling the George Lucas hate. And like I get it, like back then it was like, uh huh, funny, like hate on George Lucas, but just in retrospect now, like everything I've learned about that man the last few years. Like, I just hate the fact that, like, even it, though it was this stupid video that, like, only five people saw, I just hate the fact that I, like, I genuinely gave into that with a video. Yeah, man. You're naive. <laughs> yeah. Oh. <laughs> um, and you are till this day. Oh. No! Um, but, um, yeah. F tier. Yeah. Um, the next one is 007 License to Kill. <laughs> this is available on nuclear films. Oh, I didn't know that. Um, so I gave this one a six out of ten. Okay. I thought it actually had some really good cinematography. Not all the way through, but there were some moments that's like I I don't know why, but I really love both the shots of like the gun on the ground and Yak grabbing the gun, and then when he like lifts it up and holds it too. Um, but. The jump cuts are a little choppy, noticeable. Um, the quick, uh, it's it's quick, and then the bullet thing, count your bullets, didn't come out as clear as it could have been. Yeah, it's a little confusing. Yeah. But I actually thought you did okay as James Bond. Um, it was one of those that it's like it's it's just it's inoffensive if that makes sense. Yeah. Um, is that is that all you wanted to say about it? Pretty much. I mean, I don't know what else to say. <laughs> okay, that's actually crazy because I I did the exact same ranking, six okay. six out of ten. I, I agree with you. I, I was like, I put this DVD in and I'm like, oh, 007, here we go. This is going to suck. And then I watched it and I'm like, wow, that, that was actually kind of good. <laughs> like, um, I think it starts out like really cool. Like, you're right. The cinematography, like you don't even see James Bond yet. And, you know, the camera just makes sure to hide him. And I think that's really interesting. And you just see like the, the villain dealing with him. So it's almost like James Bond is like Jaws and like the shark. Yeah. You don't see the you don't see the shark, and that's what makes uh, Jaws so scary. And I think that's what makes Bond so um, intimidating in this film. You're right; like the cinematography really helps. Um, I think at the end, I love the end when I throw the gun at you, and you're just like, oh. And then I pull another gun out, and I'm like, boom! Like I actually yeah. do it like like James Bond. Like ah, oh, that was that was so good. <laughs> So, because he mentioned CIA agent, so is Yak supposed to be Felix? Um, I don't remember. I, I mean, I, I don't I kill him. I wouldn't kill Felix because, yeah. because yeah, Felix is my my friend. So I don't. But he I says know. he's a rogue CIA agent, so that's why I was curious. I'm like, well, Felix is the only like named CIA agent in the movie, so. No, no, it wouldn't be Felix because Felix is Bond's friend, so I I wouldn't write that. Um, but like, I genuinely love like every fight scene and there's like multiple there's like three yeah there's like three so yeah i think this is a great one obviously it's still really cringy and like bad production but i i give it a i, I think it belongs in d tier for sure if it wasn't as choppy as it was i almost would make be willing to make a case for c tier yeah i think i think 007 and it's funny too because my channel used to be called lance 007 and i think i did a pretty good video for 007 yeah the yeah. only one too <laughs> Yeah, we were going to do a second one, but it never happened. <laughs> um, the next one we're going to talk about is Batman 5, The Penguin's Plan, theatrical on nuclear films, and the special edition on Jaw movies. Um, <sighs> this one, I actually really remember liking, just because it was like, I don't know, it was quick and it was kind of funny. Like when you threw the, the Star Wars sound effect in there for the gun, I thought that was kind of funny. Yeah. Um, I actually gave it a 6 out of 10. <laughs> Um, I used to think that it was actually the second best Batman. Um, I don't know. I may be willing to change my opinion and I don't know if I would like that more than four or not, but I thought actually the pacing's pretty good. Um, the audio is still hard, but I think Wilson and you, you guys have great chemistry in this one and the scenes are kind of funny. Um, and I like the CIA scene at the end. That was something that actually, uh, I found footage for when you gave it to me to re-edit and I, um... I actually, because that wasn't in the original version, but I added that into the special edition, and I actually, I don't know, I really like that scene, even though it's quick, 
but it's like that's how the video starts with like teasing that and then it ends and it's very ominous too and i really like that wait what, what, what scene are you talking about it's at the very end when the um yak shows up as a cia agent to buy the prototype he's just he's in your house all of a sudden you're like what the how'd you get in here he's like i'm cia i'm here for the product what was that like supposed to set up the next one i don't remember oh okay um yeah, I gave that one a 2.5. <laughs> um, yeah, man, I don't like the Batmans. Like, I like the first one, and, I, and I'm pretty sure I'll like the sixth one, but, oh, God, those were just bad. I, I mean, I, my notes are the same as four. Like, honestly, like, it really does just feel like four again. Like, um, Chris is great as the Riddler. Um, Andrew is great as the Penguin. Um, you know, Cat Woman returns and she's great too. They're all great. It's just, it's just so cringy and it's just so bad. And I mean, I can see where you're coming from. That's why I'll, I'll allow these to be on D because I see where you're coming from. Like there was effort put in, um, like the, you know, yeah, there was effort put in. That's all I, I can say. Um, you can, we can put it in D if you want. I just, I, I really don't, I think these are really bad films actually um, i think i'm willing to put it in f um i think just like the more i think about it i think i ultimately like i think five i love it more as a meme than i love it as a video whereas four i have more respect for as a video yeah i i just i can't see because like i look at the tier list and i see batman one and then i just see batman four below it and it's like i don't know about that <laughs> and then batman five two below it i don't know yeah i think um <clears throat> I think I just I like it more as a meme and just that it's it's easy to rewatch. But I, I agree, like I, I think four overall is better than five. Um, I, I don't, we could do I'll agree tier. with you on that one. Um, the next one we're going to talk about is the names link from currently available on digital reality. I'll let you start since I was in that one. Okay, so this one is is going to be fun because to me, and I don't know if you agree with this. But to me, this is going to be the first one. Well, actually, hold on. Um, we, we mentioned not to say that, um, so I won't do that yet. But um, I gave it an 8 out of 10. Okay. Yeah, I, I gave it an 8 out of 10. Um, I think this one is really funny. I think um, it's a good play on the lore. Like, you don't play Zelda. Um, I actually haven't really played much of Zelda either, but I'm a video game fan. So... It's just very clever. Like he's playing on all the memes of Zelda. Yeah. And it's it's shot well. It's funny. There's a lot of people involved. Um, their writing is good. Um, it's not cringy. Like that's another thing that's crazy. It's like it's not cringy. Like I genuinely really like this one. Your acting is good. Um, so yeah, to me, I, I'll say it now, now that I got the ranking out. To me, um, you know, eight out of ten. I feel like that's a that that deserves a B tier, but I'm willing to um, compromise if you don't agree. But if it was, that would be the first B tier. <laughs> I'm gonna say you're making a persuasive argument. I gave it a seven out or a seven out of ten. Um, I thought the shot continuity was a little off, and the audio was a little quiet at times. But I agreed. I like the camera work. I like the premise. Um, I know it enough to know that, like, oh yeah, you know he's. He's just always called Zelda, so I I, I like that premise. Um, it's tough. No, I mean it's totally fair. I I mean, um, I know it, B is like high, and we're talking about like our videos. Our videos are always bad, so like B is kind of high, but at the same time, like I just feel like you know. I think I, I mean at the same time too. We're talking about our videos, right? We're looking at it like our videos. We're not like we're we're not ranking Fast and Furious on here. We're ranking our videos. I think I'm gonna keep my personal opinion at. I'll probably think I'll, I think I'll go seven point five personally, but I think I'm okay. willing to put that in B. I think this one I I can understand the argument for it. I think I'm willing I, to compromise on that. Yeah, I mean I I I appreciate that because I feel like he deserves the credit. I. Honestly, like, he didn't make as many videos as us, but when he did make a video, it was really good. Yeah. Like, and um, I wish that we worked together more because, you know, Nick was just really good at what he did. And, you know, all these Batmans, all these missions, indies, they could have been so much better if we had Nick involved. And so I agree. 
I think Nick definitely had the uh, like the production aspect of it. Uh, as far all that encompasses editing and shooting and all that, I think he actually he does really good at. It. And it's personally, I'm sad to see that he hasn't really like carried on a whole lot with it because I think he actually yeah. has a lot of potential. I think he does too. And I was actually just gonna say that. Um, I I I I don't know if Nick ever watches this, but if he does, I hope you continue your journey on filmmaking because I think you're really good at it. Um, yeah. Like I don't know if he's gonna do it now, but. If he sees this, I think you should, because I think you have a lot of talent. I agree. I agree. Um, I don't know. It's interesting. Like, to me, him and Yackerson were always, like, the two sides of the coin. Like, I thought Yackerson was really good at, like, ideas. And yeah. and uh, Johnson was really good at, like, not that he had bad ideas, of course, but I think that, like, he was stronger with his production than he was with his ideas. So, like, we'll talk about Object Unknown in a minute, but I thought that that was, like, that could have... Like that combination, not necessarily the final product, but that combination had a lot of potential. Oh yeah, like you got you got Yakerson with the ideas and Nick with the production. I, I know what you're talking about. Uh, yeah. Um. So the next one we're gonna talk about is the first one that actually came from the Web Shark, and subsequently it's only available on the Web Shark. Turn around, <laughs> look at what you see. Okay, that's that's great. <laughs> Um, I guess I'll take it since you were in that one. Yeah. I gave it a 7 out of 10. Um, I don't even know where mine is. Hold on. <laughs> a 7? Dang. Okay. So, um, excuse me. I, um, I actually thought this was genuinely funny. A genuinely funny premise and execution. Um, I really liked the idea and the execution was decent. It wasn't great, but it wasn't bad either. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> like, I don't know. I just, like, as a funny little sketch, like, I think it works. Like, it's simple. It's just, like, a hooligan running around. He's like, freeze. Turn around. And then you're like, oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and you start singing, and he's like, no, turn around. And then he, he shoots you, and then, I don't know. I just, And then, like, he, he looks up, and he's got, like, grass in his face. and Yeah. No, it's definitely funny. Um, I gave it a four just because... Yeah, I just, it's so cringy. Like, I think that's what kills it for me. It's just like, I, I think you're right. The premise is so funny. And the, you know, the the editing and the jokes, it's, it's funny, but it's also just so cringy. And I think it's just because maybe I'm watching myself singing. Um, So I, I'd be willing to compromise. I don't know about C. We could put it, we could compromise at D. Okay, because... I feel like that's definitely a D. I, I think C is kind of high. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Isn't it funny that Nick has the highest one so far? <laughs> that is kind of funny. Um, the next one we're going to talk about is Mission Impossible. First oh. one. <laughs> Currently available on nuclear films. Oh, okay, go this ahead. This was your video. I'll take it. Five out of ten. Five out of ten? It definitely Man. felt like a step up to some of the Batmans, but at the same time, like, Mission Not Impossible? Yeah. Um, the acting is bad. Bikes? Really? Yeah. Like, they just, that doesn't work. Especially since in all the other ones we use cars. You have cars in this one. Like, the bikes just don't work. Um, I like the jumping in the car scene. I don't know why, but I really like that one, and I would rank that scene alone higher. Yeah. Um... Audio and the camera is pretty bad uh, at times. Um, I hated that you used foot stock footage from Mission Impossible in like the opening sequence. Yeah, I, just, I hate that. And to me, and I remember feeling this way when I first watched it. And I remember I really disappointed you when I told you this. But this was like the first time you got to edit with Final Cut Pro. And to me, it looked like you were just having fun playing around with Final Cut Pro's Final Cut Pro's credit scenes and intro sequences. No, you're you're completely right about all those things you just said. <laughs> um, I remember back in the day, I was yeah, I was kind of upset. I was like, oh my god, like you didn't like any of that, and it was because like I was so excited for all this new technology. But watching it now, it's like you were right. Like it starts out with just Land Seven Hundred Seven, and then nuclear and it drags film. on, yeah. And then and then after that, it's like oh, here's this opening, and then oh, Land Seven Hundred Seven, nuclear films again. 
And then it's just like, there's so much transitions and it's just like, okay, stop. So I, I agree with you nowadays, like that, that was bad. Also, I hate that camera angle. I don't know what I was thinking, but I shot like this, this like random side shot with the, the bikes coming in. You know what I'm talking about? I think so. If you, if you go back and watch it, there's like a shot where it's like at an angle and it's so bad. It's like, what was I doing? And then, <laughs> and then when they switched guns, that made no sense. Like, what was the point of switching guns? Um, yeah. Like on the bikes? Um, and then, yeah. The it's one of those like, things that like, it, it looks cool, but when you think about it, it's like, what? Yeah. no. So it was, I'm willing to give that one some sort of a pass. I gave it a, um, a three out of 10. Um, I gave it a three just be, for effort. Um, but terrible production quality. Um, well, not terrible. I think it, you know, wasn't the worst, but it wasn't yeah. good. Um, uh, and the ending, Oh my God, the ending with that awful audio, like with the wind so bad. And I don't know but why, yeah. like, I love Yackerson and like his acting in the Batman videos. He, I don't know why, but it's like every performance he does, even when he's just that little grunt that goes, not like every performance he gives in the Batmans is really good, I think. And then I hate his acting in Mission Impossible. Like really? He, him as Benji, I think is just cringe. Really? Especially in this one, he's like, see, Ethan, that wasn't so impossible. Yeah. Like him as Ethan is bad or as Benji is bad. I don't I don't necessarily think it's bad, but I can, I see where you're coming from. So um, this one goes in F tier then. I'm sorry, I don't even remember what you said. You ranked it. I I gave it a three. What did you give it? Okay, five out of ten. Yeah, F tier. That that's that's dog shit. So um, I wonder if I can like. There we go. Just to keep that in line. Um, the next one then we're gonna talk about is right back to back. We're gonna go Mission Impossible Two, currently available on Nuclear Films. Um. I gave this one a six out of ten. <laughs> you were so generous. I I did not expect this from you. All right, so, go ahead. Tell me. I thought the opening. Maybe it's just because I'm much more of a positive person or a person. <laughs> I prefer to look for the good in things. You know, like all our videos are good. <laughs> <laughs> That's a reference to my YouTube video I made called "All Star Wars <laughs> Is Good." By the way. Well, that video is not canon. Oh. Um. I, think it was, I know we talked about this a little bit a couple of weeks ago, but I thought the op the opening was pretty good, actually. Yeah. Um, is that all you have to say about it? Cause... Um, I thought the plot's a little confusing. The ending's abrupt. Villain's stupid. Not not Zach, Hunter. Hunter's stupid in this as a villain. Um, <laughs> your, your yak, your, your, I put yak and Cole Benji Ethan scene is stupid when you're like, Benji! Ethan! Uh -huh. And then, like, like you literally, you're like, he just killed billions of people, and then or mil hundreds of people, and then you come in, you're like, Gee! and then you go right back to he killed a hundred of people. Yeah, um, and the audio and volume is really inconsistent, but I overall think this was an improvement upon the first one, um, and yeah, I, I thought it was worthy of a six out of ten. I disagree. I I I think it's worse than the first one. I I gave it a two out of ten. Um, F, it, the opening is iconic. I love that opening. I, I actually think the opening is like one of the best things I've made on my channel. Um, I would rank that opening like an eight out of ten if I could. Yeah, because that too. that opening is just oh, like there's like barely any dialogue and it just sets the mood and it's just it's edited so well. Uh, but everything else is just so bad. Like I like that fight scene with me and Zach, but that's pretty much it. Like. Um, I'm willing to compromise with you on this one and put it in F. Yeah, like, I, I mean, we can put it in D if you want, but I just, I don't think it's good at all. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it would have been an absolute, honestly, the only thing that put it in D for me was the opening sequence. Yeah. Yeah, do, yeah think, that opening sequence is pretty strong. I, I think it's so good, but the rest of it just, it, it's just so, I think that's why I, I, I dislike it so much too, is because, you come off of that strong opening and then it just falls apart like instantly. <laughs> so. So the next one we're going to talk about is Object of the Unknown. This one is available on nuclear films, digital reality. I think Hunter has it too. And actually, I think he has the last two Mission Impossibles. Um, and uh, John Movies. Okay. So 
you weren't a part of this one, so go ahead, take it away. Um, I gave it a three point five out of ten. Um, I thought I thought there was a lot of good moments. Um, the story is original, but I think the problem with this one is that it gets shadowed by a lot of the bad moments. Like, uh, I I hate when. Cause I know that Nick edited this and, and no offense to Nick, but I just, I do not like that music at the end. Like, like that, rhythm, like, I, I don't think it's rap music, but it's just like pop music. Like uh -huh. I, I, it takes me out of it and I just don't like that. And then like, like when he, when there's an edit of his face, like it goes, it goes up on his face. Yeah, I know what like, you mean. Like he, he edited it in a way where it was like two different directors. You had Yak that was taking it seriously, and you had Nick that was just kind of like memeing with it. Yeah. And it just like clashes together and makes this mess. Um, there's moments that I like. The acting's pretty good. I mean, I could see it being higher than a 3.5. I just gave it that because it's really just kind of a disappointment for me. Like, I feel like it had so much more potential. Uh, and I think that's why they made a new one. Yeah. Yak made a new one because it really had a lot more potential, and it just kind of got... It just was weird. I don't even know how to put it. This, you actually literally hit on like all the same notes I was going to. This was hard because this was one of my funnest like film shoots that I personally enjoyed, like fun experiences. And I really loved the video, but I gave it a 6.8 out of 10. Um, Jeez. <laughs> I would, I wanted to go higher actually. I really love the story, but it's just, it fell hard in the execution. I love Nick. I love Nick's work. You know, as we just talked about in like, the name's Link, and a couple others we'll talk about later, you know, with the campers, but I don't know, like, you, you hit it on the nose, like, he was just memeing around with this, and it it really detracts from the tone, and this yeah. is, like, the one where I wish he didn't do that, because this had, like you said, it's it had such a strong potential, and I'm actually really glad Yak did remake it, because I think out of all his videos he's done, this is his strongest story-wise. And yeah. I'm really glad that he actually remade it. And yeah, it's just the bad editing. The chase scene was not a chase scene. Golf cart, really. Um, yeah. And like, I, I also... Go ahead. Oh, go ahead. Oh, sorry. I didn't mean to cut you off. I was just going to say, I also really don't like how the CIA just shows up out of nowhere at the end. Like, where did they come from? Like, how do yeah. they even know where this house is? Like, yeah, it was... But go ahead. I cut you off. Well, and I will say one thing, though, too. I don't know if you noticed this or not, but that shot where they're, the CIA is, CIA is in the car, it's in Hunter's car, and they yeah. pull up, and, like, the way that the, the camera was angled, the sun, like, glares off the, the bumper grill. I love that shot. That might be one of my favorite shots in all of our videos. It just, that shot alone looks extremely cinematic, in my opinion. So you gave it a, you almost gave it a C, which is crazy. Um, do you I wanna... wanted to, but I knew I couldn't. You want this in D? If you're willing to compromise, I think it deserves D, but unfortunately, I just I don't think it deserves anything higher. No, I I agree with you. I might be a little too harsh, honestly. Um, I don't know why I went so low, but I I can see where you're going. I think I think there's a lot of uh, love and attention put into it. I think I, I it just got completely ruined for me at the second half. Um, that's why I ranked it so low, but. I think there's a lot of good acting, a lot of good uh, story, um, production. So, yeah, I think D is perfectly fine. I am excited to visit the remake, though. I haven't seen that since it first came out. So that I actually am excited to revisit. Wait, wait, wait. Where did you put it? I think you put it in F. Oh, I did. Whoops. <laughs> <laughs> um, We're almost done. We're almost done. <laughs> yeah. So the next one we're going to talk about is How to Train Like Rocky. <laughs> currently not available anywhere <laughs> um i gave it a, a seven out of ten really i'm willing okay. to go a little lower if you wanted to go a little lower it's not a phase amazing but it's not offensive um a couple bad like editing moments but overall like it just exists honestly i would i would change it to a seven because i kind of feel okay. honored that you that you said that i gave it a six um just because i think um it's you know i also agree it, it kind of exists it's funny it has its moments but um i think uh, i think a six I, I gave it a six but i think a seven is perfectly fine i i think that's nice of you actually <laughs> <laughs> um, but, yeah. yeah short sweet to the point <laughs> exactly yeah 
So the next one we have then we'll probably lightning through the next couple of them is uh Momo or the adventure the new adventures of Darth Momo number seven. Okay. Um This is on John Movies and Darth Momo. Okay. Uh this one I put extremely short. Um, I put two out of ten. I honestly don't really remember anything about seven. I'm not gonna lie. I think it was just so short that I, I don't really know what to say. Um, I gave it a two out of ten. Can you kind of refresh me what happens in the seventh one? I show up, I find the bounty hunter, and then I kill him. Yeah, okay, yeah. It was so short, kind of bland, pointless. I gave it a two out of ten. Initially, I wrote a six out of ten. I think I'm willing to go down to a five out of ten, though. Um, nothing sh great, but not inoffensive. Short and sweet. If you want to put it in D, I'm I'm totally fine with that. If, I mean, it's up to you. We'll put it in D then. Um, I, I, the next one is the Adventures of Darth Momo number eight on Darth Momo and Jaw movies. Um, another flashback. Okay. Um. Okay, this one I really didn't like. Yeah. Like I'm, this one. Okay, I put another flashback question mark, and then I put also this same the same story happened in four, so eight seems pointless. That's what I put. Like you literally did the exact same story in a flashback. Like that's just kind of that's kind of crazy. And it's, um, it's basically. Oh, sorry. Were you done or go ahead? No, no, go ahead. I was just gonna say I don't even rank it. I don't even. Oh, I put a one point five. Um. <laughs> I gave it initially a 4.5, and then I changed it to 4. The editing's choppy with the jump cuts. Fight is pretty bad. It's rewatchable, but pointless. I put that, too. And it, it basically was, we had that footage that we shot a year ago, and I had no idea if we were gonna ever going to use it. We probably weren't. So I, I'm like, you know what? I'll repurpose it as a vision sequence. And, like, to try and draw more intensity to the Rel fight. Because Rel was, like, the first one that, like, really beat him and that's what set him on this revenge trail so it's like he's having a fight again or a vision of his fight and he loses to rel again and i actually play off a couple of the lines in it in the next one which i had fun doing that but yeah we could put that in f tier for sure yeah um the next one is the adventures of darth momo number nine <laughs> um on uh darth momo and jaw movies take it away um, 2.5 out of 10. Um, I said ending was funny, but jokes were terrible. And again, it's just another fight with Nick. Like, it's just like you, you wanted to like make multiple sequels for no reason. So you just did the same story over and over again. It's like you fight Nick like so many different times. And it's just like, what makes this different from any other ones? This one is just cringy. Like, he's like, oh, is my gun over here? Or is it over? like, oh, that's, that's so bad. I'm sorry. Um, and then, um, the ending was funny. I don't really remember how the ending happened, but, oh, the, the Darth Vader kind of shows out of nowhere. The Darth, Mo or the Davaku? Yeah, I, I thought that was kind of funny how he just, like, shows up, but, yeah, that one was 2.5 for me. I actually gave it a 6.5 out of 10. <laughs> I don't know why, but in 4, the comedy didn't land this time around for me, but I thought the comedy was, some of it was kind of funny. The line where I go... What the heck is that? Like, I don't know why, but that just genuinely got a solid good laugh out of me. Yeah, not for me. Like that <laughs> that joke has been used in in like pop culture since the end of time. And also like when Nick starts running like an idiot, it was so cringy. Yeah. I was like, please stop. Yeah. I um we can put it in D if you want, but I This is I'll actually I think one of my favorite momos. <laughs> All right, go ahead. You can put it in D. Um, the next one then we're going to talk about real quick is the adventures of Darth Momo number 10, um, available <laughs> on Darth Momo and John movies. Take it away. Uh, oh, so this one, same thing, just like another two out of 10. Um, I, I, I'm just really mad that the villain left. It's almost like, oh, we got to make more sequels. So the villain's just going to leave. I'm like, what do you, what? Like you're in the middle of this fight and the villain just leaves. I'm like, are you kidding me? And I also put, it's just, I know much to say. They're all, they all kind of feel the same at this point. Yeah, like they do, especially that one. Like it's just another fight. And then he just leaves. I'm like, are you kidding me? 
So I, I put a 2 out of 10. But I actually put a, a 6 out of 10. I thought the fight was decent. I thought the dialogue was actually pretty decent. Um, and I thought it, it actually, like, unlike some of the other ones, this one actually, like, served the story and furthered the story. Um, and I thought it was a lot more rewatchable than I thought it was going to be. I don't know why, but I like Dava Kun. Like, he just, he's a different type of villain, which in a series, like you said, where they're all the same thing, it felt a little refreshing. Okay. Um, I, I'll compromise with D. Okay. D tier it is. <laughs> all right, okay. what is this? Okay. So the next one we're going to talk about is the adventures of or the continued adventures of Darth Momo number 11 sight without eyes available on Darth Momo and Ja movies take it away um, Jesus let me let me try to find this I don't even know where is this oh god um oh here we go okay um three out of ten uh Bad production, but finally a more interesting story. Um, I put no conflict, which is kind of good, but also kind of bad at the same time because there's just like no conflict. Uh, I like the gray idea, but at the same time, like that was already taken by Star Wars itself, so it's not like you're doing anything different. Uh, but I did give it a three out of ten for finally being different, not just like a stupid lightsaber fight. You know what I mean? I um, I gave it a four out of ten. I thought it was boring. I thought the acting was bad. And I hate that it's a, basically a Rebels ripoff. This, we made this shortly after the beginning of Rebels Season 3 when Kanan goes to learn from the Bendu. Yeah, so, I know. I figured. I'm like, this has already been done before. <laughs> um, so, yeah, I gave it a 4 out of 10. This is one of yeah. my, I think, one of the lesser Momos. Yeah, that's, that's definitely an F tier. <laughs> Um, the next one we're going to talk about is silent film. <laughs> from... <laughs> silent film. From Julio Kid Films. <laughs> um, this is currently available on Julio Kid Films. <laughs> All right. Take it away on this one. So I actually gave it a 6 out of 10. Um, I was thinking about it, and I'm like, you know what? Like, it's short and sweet, and I can understand it visually. Like, there's no dialogue at all, and I can understand what's happening. Um, and I like that, the, you know, they put it, they did it in front of a green screen, and, like, it, it's not, like, bad green screen. Like, it's obviously a green screen, but it's, like, it's just, like, new technology for the time. Mm -hmm. So... I gave it a six, but I did not like the ending at all. I thought it was so stupid how, like, they, they built, I thought she was going to make something nice, and then they were finally be like, oh, it's nice, but no, it's just, oh, it's always bad. Like, the coffee's just always bad. I, I thought that was really dumb. But I give credit where credit's due. Um, yeah, six out of ten. I gave it a four out of ten. I said, at first glance, it looks fine, but the closer you look, the worse it gets. Um, okay. But... I think I'm willing to compromise on D tier because if we're going to put Momo 7, 9, and 10 in D tier, yeah. I think it's fair that this goes in D tier. And I didn't even think about the whole aspect of like, it's a silent film. So like, can you understand what was going on? And I could. Um, yeah. So I think D, D is fair for this one. Yeah. <laughs> the next one we're going to talk about is Waldo <laughs> from Julio <laughs> Kid Films. Currently available on Coolio Kid Films. Um, I gave it a 1.5 out of 10. <laughs> I don't even know why we're ranking this. I, I, I don't even think this is a film. This is I told you it was a project. To me, this felt like a film, except for the fact that he put in there like POV. Death. <laughs> <laughs> That's crazy. You gave it a 1.5? Yeah, it was awfully produced, awfully edited. He left his subtitles in there. He should have taken those out. Like, I have, I've, how many of you guys took video production? And I've never seen it in any of your guys' videos. Well, because I, I try to tell you it's a project. It's not a short film. I was trying to tell you that. Like, I don't know why we're ranking it. But If we're going to rank Attack on Blank Page Loans, I think this one, I mean, it's cohesive enough to be a video. 
All right. I mean, I gave it a four out of ten just because, I mean, um, it's funny and um, it's short and sweet and um, yeah, that, yes. that, that's that's all. I, that's all I gave. It. I don't really. I don't really have anything else to say. I think it's kind of funny how it's just like, will they survive? <laughs> But yeah. All right. F tier it is then. F tier. And now at last, we get to Captain Rodder, Renewed Warrior, the remake. You want me to go? Wait, you're going first, right? I'll go first since, yeah, I guess I had nothing to do with this one. Um, I gave it a five out of ten. Okay. Um, oh, this one's available on nuclear films. Just because uh, it would have been available on the Web Shark, but that was copyrighted. <laughs> so in oh some God. ways I think it's worse than the original yeah um, the audio is still bad <laughs> the, sh the camera work still kind of shoddy at times the actors are literally reading the script in the final take like in the hospital bed you can see yeah. the doctor staring at the script yeah. it's like what yeah, I, I think I agree. Like, in retrospect, like, I think the actor was better for the Doctor, but otherwise, I think the scene from the last one was better. Yeah. And I said I like the story, um, and I like one or two small sequences, but some of the locations are bad for the video. Yeah. Like, my room as a, as a hospital was just so bad. Like, or is, like, his, his backyard shed as, like, the terrorists could be hiding there? Well, I also just don't understand that shot because it's like, like you go in there and I I guess that makes sense, but I I never understood that shot when we when we first recorded it because you can see the shed from the other side, so it's like, how did you not know anyone was in there? You know what I mean? Yeah. Like you can see the shed in a different shot. So. And it's like he's in there for a while too. It takes him like it's a small shed, and he like he looks around the entire five foot shed to go, oh, no one here. Well, yeah. duh. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, um, I gave it a four just because, like, I'll give him props for remaking an older film and uh, trying it again. I think that's worthy of like some credit. Um, uh, what else did I play? Um, but yeah, bad production. Um, there's some things that he did better in the first one that I wish he carried over to this one, and there's some things he better did. He, uh, he did better in this one. Um. But overall, like, I think it's the first one. I don't think it's that great. I think he, some of the other ones, from my memory, are better. But this one, I, I think, is it's notable, too, because, like, this is really the start of, like, Yackerson's... I would say one of his worst trends is that he uses, like, the same 10 soundtracks over and over. I know. And, and he does to I this know. day. And it's, like, it just reminded me of that. Maybe that's why I like the music in the original, too, is because the music was... Granted, I think that was you who did the music, but it was different. Yeah. Whereas, yeah. like, this one, it's it's the same music. Yeah. So, so F tier, unfortunately. F tier, yeah. I remember him saying, like, he was really proud of his Captain Rodder trilogy, and so far, I don't understand why. I mean, I guess I do, <laughs> but I don't agree. <laughs> Dang. Um, yeah. All I can say is, like, if you really want to know our true thoughts on the Captain Rodder video, check out Everything Wrong with Captain Rodder Renewed Warrior in six minutes or so, something like that, on the Darth Momo YouTube channel. Um, the next video is The Fight at School, currently on Nuclear oh. Films. What did you do? Um, I gave it a 7 out of 10. A 7? Dude, you, you don't deserve to watch Bad Bad. Uh, well, guess what I'm going to go do after this? Watch Bad Bad? Yeah! <laughs> Seven. That's crazy. I just, I, I don't know. I, th I thought there was a couple small, like, easy-to-fix mistakes that were made. Otherwise, like, I really like the idea. I really like the execution. And I also like the aspect, too, that it was pretty much like, hey, we need to make something. We want to make something. And Robin had been sitting on that idea for a little while, and he's like, let's go make it. They went down to the cafeteria, got the guys gathered, Shot it and edited it. Okay, I think it's really rewatchable. What? I said I think it's really rewatchable too. Oh yeah, you and I have very different opinions about that one. Um, all I, 
I was a, I was a little too harsh on this one. Um, I gave it a one. Yeah, a one. I I really did not like it. Um, the audio is just so bad. Uh, it's so short, which I get. I guess is the point, but um, the production quality is just so bad. Um, I only gave it a point for the story, which I think is really funny. But it's just like okay, like it, it happens, and then that's it. It's just like. Like I wish they kind of did more with it. Like it's not really a film in, in, per se. It just it doesn't really have a beginning, middle, and end. It just kind of oh, it was just a joke, you know? Like they're yeah, it's a little gonna... comedy sketch, yeah. Yeah, but I do think that one out of ten is a little harsh. I don't know why I put one out of ten. Um, would you agree with D tier? I think so. Okay. Yeah that that one I I'm actually kind of surprised I put one out of ten. Like that's kind of ridiculous. But a C tier? No, no. <laughs> Um. All right, two left, two left. The next one we're going to talk about is Jaywalkers, currently available on digital reality and nuclear films. Okay. I gave this one a 7 out of 10. Um, That's funny because so did I. <laughs> <laughs> I thought it was a little choppy at times, but overall, it was good. Yeah, I think this one is hilarious. Um. Uh... It's, I agree with you. The production can be kind of bad sometimes, but um, the story is unique. It's yeah. funny. Um, it's the most again, emotion we've ever seen out of Hunter. Yeah, that's ah! true. But, like, I genuinely laugh every time I watch this one. It's just, again, like, Nick knows how to edit something. Um, and when we, when we put us together with him, like, we get good videos. Like, yeah. I, think, I think this one is definitely a C tier. Um, yeah, short and sweet. Funny, good editing. Ah. Okay. Oh, whoops! I grabbed both of them. Um, where to go? Where to go? Oh no! What did you do? Gray. <laughs> Somewhere. Where's the last one? Wait, where's Jaywalkers? <laughs> That's what I'm trying to find. There we <laughs> oh go. my god! You can't take that out now. Great. I should be able to. Huh. What What even is that anyway? So, well, the next, I just want to make sure, this is how we had it, right? These were our C tiers? I guess, yeah. Okay. So, the next one we're going to talk about, which I don't think it belongs there, but um, is our final one we're going to talk about, Batman Origins, currently available on, well, the special editions on Jaw Movies. Special editions. Um, I guess I'll take it since it was yours. I yeah, gave it ahead. a 6 out of 10. You did a what? A 6 out of 10. <coughs> God, every time I just cough when I hear your reviews. 6 um, out of 10. Why did you give it a 6? Um, I think the the camera quality and the audio is bad, obviously. <laughs> that camera yeah. I gave you. Otherwise, I think it's really good. It's fun. It's rewatchable. It's good pacing. I think it's just a fun premise, and it's a different premise for Batman. And it's um, unique. Okay, I mean, I I agree with you on that, um, but I gave it a three um, because I think it's funny and iconic, but horrible production. Um, and it's it's like funny, but sometimes it's like stupid funny. Like it's not, it yeah. doesn't even fit in the universe. Like it 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 it's like its own canon. Because it, there's no way that's the same Bruce Wayne. Like, it's stupid. Well, I always um, thought it was canon. <laughs> I don't think it is canon. <laughs> we should make I'm... a video debating whether it should be canon or not. Like, we should put forth our arguments. Okay, fine. We'll do that one day. Um, but, uh, yeah, I put a three. But, I mean, honestly, I, I do agree with you. Some of the, the comedy is pretty hilarious and unique. Um, and the premise is kind of funny. So I would put it in D tier. It's got Lance and Katie in it. It's like the only film with Katie. Yeah, it is actually. That's another reason why I put it in F tier because it had Katie. Oh. All right. Well, that's our um, that's our ranking. Obviously, a lot more variety this time around. That was nice. Yeah. And um, obviously a little lengthier. We're sorry about that. Um, yeah. I hope 2017 won't be as long. We have, I think, 37 videos. Yeah, this we should 43. probably. 
we should probably be a little bit quicker on 2017. But yeah, this one was just like overwhelming me a lot. And the, the nice thing about 2017 too is that it'll be a lot more variety. So this one, like over half the videos, well, no, about half the videos were Momos and Batmans. 2017 has three Momos and no Batmans. Thank God. <laughs> so that'll be a nice different variety. There's a lot more variety in just the videos we created. You start getting a lot more original. Um, Yak, uh, I guess Yak's got his Rotterverse, but even then, like you could say they're all kind of unique since there's different installments in the Rotterverse. So I'm excited yeah. for 2017. I am too. I think that's going to be fun. Uh, I'm glad we got through 2016, though, because that was way too much. Yeah. And a lot of them were bad. Like, look at that F tier. I'm actually... Yeah. I, it is kind of crazy that we had uh, some C tiers and one B tier, and we had a lot of Ds. So that's, if that's I had to cool. guess, next time around, I think the D tier right now, that's how our F tier is going to look, and I think this is how our D tier is going to look. Okay. Okay. I could be wrong. Who knows? But th that's my theory. I think we're going to have less F tiers and more D tiers. I do think we might have at least a few Cs and Bs, but we'll, we'll see. There's one I, I already could think of that I would like to put in S, but we'll we'll get there when we get That's there. That's crazy. S tier? Okay. This this going to be fun. But thank you guys for joining in. For those who are still around, this has been fun to do. It's a fun blast of a time to do it. And we thank you guys for partaking of this fun history. I like how you changed your name to 00 Studio on there. <laughs> yeah, I did that because the last time it just says my name. So. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, um. Flibberton off Clib? <laughs> All right. Thank you guys for watching. We'll see you in the next one in 2017. <laughs>